Hello everyone, we hope you are all doing well. Welcome to one more video presented to you by Insights IAS team as part of your Insta Ethics GS4 initiative. Now in this video, we will be talking about a syllabus topic that you all are well aware of. What is the syllabus topic? Attitude, that is you have to read about the content or the definition of attitude, the structure and function of attitude. Now this is going to be a two part video. In the first part, we will start with the basic things and then we will move on to higher level and understand what is the collective significance of this particular topic from the perspective of your examinations. Now attitude, the term attitude, no matter whether you have started your preparation just now or whether you have been in the preparation for a very long time or even if you are not in the preparation, the meaning of the term attitude you already know. What is the general perception of attitude? What does it mean for the general population? Attitude is basically what we think about certain people about certain objects. Now generally people say that if you want to succeed in life, you need to have a good attitude. Generally, when you observe your relationship with people around you or even with your family, it is with those people who showcase good attitude, you have good relations with. People who showcase negative attitudes, you tend to be distant away from them. Attitude helps us to think, helps us to behave. Attitude also helps us to have good relations with all others in the society. These are the general few things that we know about attitude as of now. But over here, in your UPSC exam perspective, we will reason out what exactly is attitude from different perspective, from a psychological perspective? How exactly attitude is formed? What are the various components of an attitude? We will be objectively looking into all these aspects. And remember, anything and everything that you read, you should be able to apply to what you are studying as of now. You should be able to look at the history. We should be able to look at the present few things happening in our society, in our world and apply what we read. When you are an officer, what is the kind of attitude you need to show? To what extent you need to be positive? To what extent these attitudes should serve as a platform for you? to encourage others who are working with you to be part of the process. When you have a good attitude, others around you, they tend to follow that. Right? Leadership. What kind of an attitude a leader should have? All these aspects. Now, imagine you are an administrator and you are dealing with a person, your own colleague, who has a negative attitude about certain things or certain people. How should you deal with such a person? How to overcome the negative attitudes that he or she has? All these things are important. Our family, our society, our educational institutions, they all have a very big role in terms of forming our attitudes. The recent few things in our society, be it the emergence of social media, be it the advent of the pandemic, all these things have subtle changes on our attitude process. You can expect questions on this topic both from section A as well as section B perspective. Alright, having understood the importance or significance of this topic from the perspective of exams, let us now go ahead and look at certain things. I told you, we generally tend to respect those people who have showcased brilliant attitude in their lives. Here, I have taken two examples. Both of them are called as great. 
One is Alexander the Great who had a wish to capture the whole of the world through warfare techniques. And on the other hand, you have one more person, Ashoka the Great from our own country. Why was he called great? Was he called great because of his attitude of war that he showcased in Kalinga, where he was so cruel and brutal in nature? Or was it because of some other reason? You already know the answer. Ashoka was called great because he showcased what a king should be like. His was a rule which was, sh which was showcasing welfareism. His was a rule which showcased tolerance. His was a rule which upheld the liberal values of equality, liberty, fraternity and justice. Where do you find justifications for all these things in your Dhamma principles? Is it not? Right? So these type of attitudes when you are reading about a leader or a philosopher or a reformer, you should be able to take examples from them. As an administrator, what kind of attitude you need to have? You need to have the same type of attitude that Ashoka showcased. Tolerance, respect towards other religion, compassion. In his Dhamma principles, if you have read and if you remember, he wanted people to show compassion to people from other different faiths, to the slaves who were existing and not just them, to show compassion also towards animals as well. Now, if I ask you a question now, who do you think is great? Is it Alexander the Great or Ashoka the Great? I very well know what answer you are going to give to me. Is it not? Right? So, why I gave you this example is, in your daily preparation, you will be reading about so many leaders, philosophers and reformers. When you are reading newspapers, you will be coming across so many brilliant leaders, administrators, who have done excellent works, who have showcased brilliant attitudes in their life, in their professional as well as their personal life. When you look at Padma Awards, which happens every year, we tend to get motivated when we hear stories about certain people. The amount of challenges that they have faced and how they have been able to overcome that and still excel in life and lead a life which is an example for all of us. You know many names of such Padma Awardees in recent few years. Why have they been able to overcome such challenges? It is because of their attitude. It is because how they think and how their thinking is reflected in their behavior. Is it not? So I want you to build this framework continuously. How leaders in America react to certain things. How leaders in India react to certain things. What are the political attitudes we have? In India, welfareism is one of the most important attitude. But when you go to America, it is capitalism, market economics. In India, we have this attitude or we have this belief where we are supposed to take care of our parents when we grow old. In America, there is emphasis on individualism, right? So at societal level, we have differing attitudes, not just between individuals in the country, but between two countries as well, between two different cultures. At moral levels, some people have differing notions on what a good life is, right? These differing notions are nothing but difference or diversity in attitudes of people. You have your societal attitudes, you have moral attitudes which deals with perceptions or notions related to morality concerning goodness, compassion, sympathy and all those kind of things. Then you have political attitudes, right? Keep these few things in your mind. Please don't forget it. Moving on. I have just noted down certain important things that you need to remember to understand this topic with utmost and simple clarity. Nothing more than that. What is the first thing? I have given you the definition of attitude. An attitude is a group of feelings. It's a group. It's not just one feeling. Remember, it's a group of feelings. On one particular object, you can have positive attitude towards it. You can have negative attitude towards it 
and so many other things. Alright? It is a group of feelings, thoughts and actions one has toward a certain thing, a person, thing or event. A group of feelings, group of thoughts. Many a times if I ask you a question, what do you think about so and so issue? Do you want death penalty? Do you support abortion rights for women? Some will say, yes sir, I support it. Some will say, no sir, I won't support it. Some will be like, can't say sir, I am not able to decide. Various attitudes and such things you always have to keep in mind. Okay? Don't write your answers in a way which will reflect only one attitude. Most of the times when you are writing your answers, your faculties, your mentors will tell you to bring multiple perspectives. What are these multiple perspectives? It is nothing but the existence of multiple attitudes in our life, in the society in which we live. Moving on, attitudes can strongly affect behavior, okay, and are frequently the byproduct of experience or upbringing. When I was talking about role of family, society, and educational institutions, I told you how they emphasize their ideologies or notions in our life. I told you, if you are living in a family where you see that men and women are treated in an unequal manner, you will pick up such patriarchal mindset, nothing but patriarchal attitudes. This patriarchal attitude you might showcase in your behavior as well. So what I am trying to say is, attitudes can affect behavior. They are a byproduct of our experiences in life or our upbringing in life. All right? Experiences in the sense. When Gandhiji went to South Africa, when he was traveling in a train, you all know this incident. When he was traveling in a train, he was kicked out of an apartment, of a compartment, sorry. He was kicked out of a compartment because of racism. That changed his notion. That experience changed his life. Kalinga war changed the attitude, brought about a major and a radical change in the attitude of Ashoka as well. Right? Experiences. Right? Please remember that. Attitudes can strongly affect behavior. That one thing. The last part. Even though attitudes can strongly affect behavior, they are malleable. What does it mean? Malleable. It means they are subjected to change. Always keep that in mind. We don't have this, any attitude, any feeling that we have towards a person, object or a place. Doesn't mean that we will have the same attitude throughout our life. It might change. Right? That is what it means. Attitudes can be persistent. But they can also be changed. The other things. What are the various types of attitude do we have? I already told you. All right, societal, moral, political, this is one form of classification. Another form of classification is based on the nature of attitude, positive attitude. You are completely in favor of it. Negative attitude, you are against it. Nothing much to explain on this issue. Positive attitude, all right. The, the next one, the third one is second attitude. I will come to second attitude a bit later. Let me talk about this one, neutral attitude. Neutral is, can't say. Neither here nor there. What is the second attitude? Let me talk about it now. Second attitude is an extreme form of negative perceptions we have. You have come across people, even if something good is happening in their life, they tend to look at it in a negative manner. You come across people who say, India ka yahi hoga. This is what India is going to be. Ishtei Deshadu. They have such form of negativeness. Even when they are facing certain positive things, they always focus on the negative side of the things. Even if the reality is different. This is called a second attitude. And this is an extreme form of negativism that can bring down a person. If one has this psychological attitude, it can push them towards that anxiety, towards that depression. 
and all of us at one point or the other we might have felt this sicken attitude right when you are facing such types of feeling talk to the people around you talk to our mentors talk to all of us and deal with it all right we've all been through that journey so please don't have such attitude and move on in life always engage always interact life is very beautiful moving on the next thing attitude does not always get reflected in behavior i might have an attitude all right let me say let me give you an example this is something that you might have come across people might have notions about caste system people might still believe in the notions of hierarchy now in their family circle they might follow it but the moment they go to their office where they have to engage with people from all different caste they might not follow such attitude in their workplace organization because they are afraid of certain things they might be suspended from the jobs if they go for any type of discrimination openly but there are instances where caste based hidden discrimination is showcased there are instances where hidden discrimination against women are showcased through the attitude of certain people right attitudes they strongly affect behavior sometimes the attitudes that we have might not create that behavior it might not get reflected in behavior based on multiple reasons we'll discuss about this in the next part of our video the next thing attitude could either be explicit or implicit this is about how attitudes are formed what are explicit attitudes these are something that we consciously believe in consciously guide us you're an rcb fan very difficult to say an rcb fan but yes still you're an rcb fan you come across another rcb fan you instinctively like that person this is explicit we are conscious about our attitudes in explicit attitudes it is either you will have positive feeling or negative feeling good or bad there is no middle path in implicit attitudes they are unconsciously subconsciously formed how is this let me give you an example imagine when you were young you went to a hotel and in that hotel you ate something that created food poisoning or any such kind of thing now after few years when you have grown up you go to another hotel which has a similar name you might not be remembering the whole incident that happened when you were young but still you will feel that kind of uneasiness in that hotel unconsciously or subconsciously your attitude towards this new hotel which shares a name with something in the past is guiding you is affecting your behavior this is what implicit attitudes are the prejudices that we have some of the forms of discrimination that we follow the stereotypes that we follow are implicit in one way or the other we will discuss about all these three things prejudice stereotype and discrimination a bit in the next part of the video for as of now these are the most important basics of attitude that i want you to understand and also make a note out of it if you want moving on i just written few quotes that might be of use to you when you are writing answers or when you are writing your essays as well what are the few quotes a positive attitude brings strength energy motivation and initiative all right a negative attitude on the other hand is like a flat tire you can't go anywhere until and unless you change it if you are having a negative attitude towards upsc preparation if you are having a negative attitude towards the subject it might be ethics it might be art and culture it might be society and what not first forego that negative attitude understand the importance or the significance of it enjoy the process once you change that negative mindset that is when you will be able to move on in life as an officer you need to have that a positive attitude and not negative attitude the last quote bad officials are elected by good citizens who do not vote the reason why i have given this quote is this is pertaining to our political attitudes 
we have this perception that India will not change. And why will India not change? Because we have leaders who don't want to bring change. We often blame our leaders. This is the political attitude that many people have. There needs to be a change and that change needs to start from you. Go ahead and vote. Please don't express your opinions only on the social media platform, but go to the electoral booth, cast your vote and showcase your political attitude. Right? Remember, I told you in the beginning, we, have, we can classify attitudes in terms of societal attitudes, moral attitudes and political attitudes as well. This one, the last one pertains to that. Moving on. This is Annie Frank. Some of you might already know about her. She was just 15 years old, living in Germany, which was witnessing all sorts of inhuman atrocities against Nazis and other minorities living there. She had every reason, being a Jew herself, who saw many of her own family members being persecuted. She had every possible reason to believe that man was cruel. Men were cruel. But nevertheless, in her diaries, if you have read about it, she showcased positiveness. Positive attitude in the face of utmost adversity in her life. This is one of the few things that she has written. I don't think of all the misery, but of the beauty that still remains. Beauty that still remains. Positiveness. She was not thinking about the Nazi atrocities, but the beauty that existed in some people. Her own family was given protection by a German citizen. Despite of all the atrocities that she witnessed, she believed that man was kind. That's the positive attitude. Right? Now, why am I giving you all these examples? Because you will have even better examples than what I am giving to you. Just make sure that you list them out or make a mental note of them so that you can use such examples in your essays or ethics paper wherever you require. Alright? Moving on. I have taken two issues to showcase certain aspects of attitude. The first one is Swachh Bharat. Ek kadam Swachata ke or. Before Swachh Bharat, we had few more hygiene related programs such as Total Sanitation Campaign, Nirmal Bharat Abhyan. Whenever a government brings any program, the people, they have to accept it. The change, the need for that change needs to be accepted in their mind. And that change will affect the behavior of the people towards the policy or the program. But both total sanitation campaign and also Nirmal Bharat Abhyan were not successful. Because people did not accept the change that the government wanted to bring because of those programs. They did not showcase that through their behavior. But with Swachha Bharat Abhyan, they did accept it. Because what was the thing that government focused on? It focused on something called as community participation. From the president of India till the last person in this country, they all wanted an attitudinal change. Attitudinal change towards hygiene, cleanliness and this was reflected in their behaviors. Right? Please remember this example. Then this is related to societal attitudes. Religion in India. Tolerance and segregation. This was based on a Pew article. What does this say? Indians say it is important to respect all religions. This is tolerance. Tolerance is one of the most important attitudes that we carry in our life. Is it not? Right? Societal attitudes that we carry. But major religious group say little in common and want to live separately. Intercaste marriage? Absolutely not. Interfaith marriage? Absolutely not. Moral attitudes that we hold, societal attitudes that we hold. We consider marriage between people from different castes as bad. Our perception of what a good marriage right, affects our behavior as well. Remember these two things. Attitudes. Here you see that as a society we believe in tolerance. But when we are practicing it, when it has to be showcased in terms of behavior, we are not doing it. Alright, 
It is a difference in attitude and behavior. Whatever I have discussed before, I am just trying to give some examples now. Right. Two more important quotes that I felt will be useful to you. The leader's attitude helps determine the attitudes of the followers. All right. As an officer, your attitude will determine how your followers will react. I, if your attitude is positive, they will be positive. If your attitude itself is negative, they will be negative as well. All right. The other quote, a great attitude is not the result of success. Success is the result of a great attitude. After becoming successful, a person will not develop great attitude. Once you have a great attitude, that is when you develop success in life. A great attitude means looking at things in the positive way, looking at the challenges, looking at whatever things is scaring you or making you fearful, looking at it from that hope, optimism and rising against that fear, overcoming that fear. All right. Once you have such great attitude, that is when you will see success. If not, success will not be there. Right. Moving on. I am just going to give you some examples of people who have overcome challenges in their life so that it might help you in your exams. The first one is Steven Spielberg. The first film of his that I remember watching was Jurassic Park. Maybe you also have watched that movie. He has done n number of movies throughout his life. Jaws, Schindler's List and so many other movies. The list is very long. We all believe that Steven Spielberg is one of the greatest filmmakers that the world has ever seen. But this greatest filmmaker, one of the greatest filmmakers was rejected admission into one of the most prestigious colleges in America in terms of cinematic art. What was that? University of Southern California. They rejected him twice, thrice because he has C grade. He did not give up though. He wanted to excel. He had that positive attitude in his mind. He applied to another college elsewhere and he was able to overcome whatever challenges he faced and his talent finally showcased in the films that he made. On the same person, you have syllabus in the cinematic arts about the movies that he has done. A positive attitude yielding results. Success is not something that gets generated after, all right? If you have a great attitude, that is when you will see success. I am just giving you one example for that. The next one, Walt Disney. You all know who Walt Disney is. You all know what he is famous for. He went bankrupt so many times. Even after opening the Disney, he was not able to pay his employees. But he did not lose hope in his life. He again showcased that great attitude which eventually made Walt Disney successful in his life. He lacked imagination, had no good ideas. When he pitched the idea of Mickey Mouse to a famous studio house, this was the comment that they gave. He lacked imagination and had no good ideas. In your life, you might be coming across certain people who might give you their opinions which might affect your attitude of your own self. Please don't do that. One of the videos that we released a couple of months ago, Shut the Noise, was basically trying to make sure that you are not influenced by those people who can bring about a negative change. in Believe in yourself. Believe in your talent and capabilities. Believe in your dreams. A person who was told that lacked imagination showcased what beautiful imagination he had in his life. All right? Moving on, components of an attitude. There are three important components of an attitude. What are those three things? Cognitive component. What does this do? It talks about how our thoughts and belief are about a subject. Right? Cognitive learning. How I have learned about my religion, about a particular subject. If I have learned something, in a scientific, in an objective way that will be reflected in my behavior. The learning process, that is what cognitive means. Affective component, how I feel about an object, a person, a place or an event. It's the emotional aspect. How you feel, how you feel it is nothing but emotion. How you feel about the thing, person, thing, situation or event. 
The next thing is behavioral component. What is this behavioral component? It is the action. Attitude is the thought. Behavior is the action. All right. All these three things, right? They together constitute components of an attitude. You can remember them by CAB cap or ABC. Okay. Moving on. Now, over here, I have just taken one example. It is a very crude example, but nevertheless. Now, there were many people who believed that the rule of the Britishers was very good for us. It was bringing about some sort of economic growth in our country. This was the cognitive aspect. Many people believed that. And even Britishers reinforced this aspect through their education system. Many people that too in the initial phase of a national freedom struggle spoke about the ill effects of British rule on our economy and one such person was Dada Bhai Naroji. He has written a book that all of you have studied, bi-hearted, memorized. What is the book name? Poverty and Un-British Rule in India. This was something which changed, one of the few books that changed our perception of the British rule. British rule was creating poverty. And the less and less amount of British rule, that is where the progress lied. Our beliefs and thoughts being moulded by Dada by Navaroji. The emotional aspect, the affective component. Many people believed that Indians were inferior to the Britishers. We somehow thought that the British were superior to us. I won't go into the reasons why it was. But whatever the case, when you look at the Bhakti Sufi movement, when you look at the religious reform movements, everything that happened, they wanted to emphasize the emotion about being an Indian, about belonging to certain cultures. The image that you see in front of you is that of Bharat Mata painting, which was painted by Abhindranath Tagore. Here it shows the serene calmness, the richness of India's culture ancient and medieval including. This was the emotional aspect to it. Right? You have leaders such as Bal Gangadhanath, Tilak, Subhash Chandra Bose, Gandhiji, Ambedkar, so many people who have used both cognitive aspect and the emotional aspect to mold your attitude. So when you become an administrator, if you want to change the behavior of the people, you have to understand what are the source from which your cognitive aspect is being encouraged. What are the sources that you need to use to change their emotions? When you do this, you can bring about an attitude change. When you look at both these works, they played an important part in changing the behavior of the people in terms of national freedom struggle. Eventually, all these works were important for us to realize that we belong to a country, a single country united by rich history. Right? Moving on. This was a question. There are few more aspects related to attitude. I will be taking that up in our next video, part two. What is the question th regarding this? The current internet expansion. This was the question that I gave last time around. The current internet expansion has instilled a different set of cultural values which are in conflict with that of the traditional values, 150 words. You have to write an answer for this. Here, I am just going to give you an approach, a framework for it. What is the introduction? People usually go for defining what a culture is. People usually talk about internet expansion and that's about it. Please don't go for definition approach every time. It is becoming too obsolete and outdated in the present scenario. What, what is it that you have to do? You have to try to capture the essence of the question in your introduction. Right? In your in, not in the definition, but in the introduction. How will you capture the essence? Now, when we are growing up, the socialization. Remember, this topic is related to the last video that we discussed. Right? Role of family, educational institutions and uh, society. Ideally, all right? It was our family, society and educational institution that imbibed in us the values that we had. And when you look at the values that we inherited, they were all based on traditional notions of our understanding of religion, education and what not. But in the present scenario, there is a change that is being introduced in the form of internet. More and more people 
are becoming members or are, are, are using internet on a daily active basis. This is creating another set of cultural values. What is culture? The way we think, the way we eat, our customs, beliefs, traditions and practices and everything. How this cultural, new cultural values is creating challenges or is it helping us in the form of socialization? Is it having a conflict with the traditional values? Is it having a co-harmonious existence? That is what the question is asking for you because the key term over here is discuss. So if I have to write an introduction, I will just concise this. In an Indian society perspective, it is the family, educational institution and society who play a major role in the value formation. And these values are based on traditional notions of our understanding of customs, uh, understanding of culture. However, the rise of the internet has brought about perceptible changes in this value formation process. Rise of the internet. If you do that, it is more than enough. Okay. Going further, the body, you will identify our traditional values. What are traditional values? It could be our mode of interactions. We believe in traditional interactions, face-to-face -face interactions, but because of the rise of internet, it is, it is now virtually. There is both positive as well as negative to it. Tolerance is one of our traditional values, but because of the rise of internet, you also have fundamentalism, right, which directly impacts this tolerance and creates conflict. There are ideologies that we have. There are perceptions that we have. In our traditional perspective, alternative lifestyle is considered unnatural, so that it is undesirable as well. But when your mind is opened to various ideologies because of internet, you tend to accept these alternative lifestyles. You tend to give respect to those people who have all these alternative lifestyles. So in this case, there is no conflict. Rather, there is a positive change, social change that has been brought about. Remember, traditional values and new cultural values brought about by internet, they don't have to conflict every time. There are various layers. These various layers are something that you need to discuss. I have given you the various domains in which you can think. Alright? Just give examples where they are conflicting with each other. You give examples where a positive change is being brought. Alright? And then you move on. Okay? Next. Wherever, whichever answer you are writing, not just in ethics, wherever there is a negative concern or a challenge that is presented to you, always give a way forward. Alright? That way forward should be realistic, should be practical. Okay? It should not be general in nature. What is the way forward that we can give in terms of building or giving uh, emphasis on mode of interactions. We need to encourage our children, all right, to have that physical interactions, encourage them to take sports, not just PUBG, online sports or anything, but real physical sports like that. Give practical solutions like that, right? Now, moving on, once you have done the way forward, you need to give a conclusion. Many people say, sir, way forward and conclusion, can they be same? Yes, they can be same. But when you write a conclusion, the evaluator, you are providing him an opportunity to give you that extra mark. So what I am trying to say is, make sure that you write a way forward. Along with the way forward, you also write a conclusion. But if you just write way forward and uh, perceive that as conclusion, it is absolutely fine. Many people do that. But if you write a conclusion, there is a probability that you might get an extra half a mark. That is all that you need at times to get through your examination. What conclusion you can give? An optimistic and solution based one. An opinion basically. A very optimistic and solution based opinion. As of now the internet, the rise of internet, in it you have values which are both positive and negative. We need to create structures in place where internet showcases positive values. Where it does not lead to conflict with our traditional values. This sounds very philosophical, but it is not. You can bring a digital privacy law, you can bring an intermediary rules change, something that we have tried so that 
internet cannot be used for bringing down tolerance or creating intolerance in society, right? You are giving an opinion, you are highlighting a solution that the government has taken. That is what is required in conclusions, all right? Moving on, the question for you to practice today is, this is a previous year question, a positive attitude is considered to be an essential characteristic of a civil servant who is often required to function under extreme stress. Positive attitude, I focused so much today on this positive attitude. They are saying that a positive attitude is a must for a civil servant to function under extreme stress. What contributes a positive attitude in a person? What are the various factors which contribute to the rise of this positive attitude? Just put down what you think is the right answer. And I will be discussing this in the next class. I will be discussing how attitudes are formed, how you can bring about a change in this attitude, why certain attitudes are difficult to change, all these aspects, the nuances of attitude, we will be discussing in the next video. Thank you for your time. Please take care of yourself and we will see you later in the next video. Thank you.